you go. Okay, so on the presentation for you today is based on a project proposal, which I'm hoping to implement within my organisation. So I'll just give you a bit of an overview of my company. Um, so I work for Complete Network Services. Uh, it's a telecom company which provides services in and around the UK. Um, my position is a service desk analyst. So I primarily deal with customer services, um, working with internal and external customers. Um, I also work closely with management, HR and the engineering team. So before deciding on my project proposal, there are various factors that I needed to consider. Um, for example, what's currently in place at the moment, um, what budget do we have in place this year, um, and how long would it take to implement. So, um, when considering the possible ideas, um, I tried to apply the simplex process, which is displayed on the board. Um, the site will help me think about all the necessary points that are needed to be considered when implementing a change in my business. So for example, if we take step one, problem finding, um, with this step um, I've created like different mind maps um, and assessed the current issues in my business and how they could be addressed. <coughs> okay, so using this method um, and the mind maps that I created, um, I came up with the following three project ideas. So the first one was the adaptation of the goal green policy. The second was the reinforcement of regular staff meetings in the workplace. And the third topic was the introduction of employee satisfaction surveys. So to help me decide how long the project proposal I wanted to progress with, I created a SWOT analysis for each idea. So this highlights the main strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats for each idea. If you just want to take um, a look at the slide and I'll just give you a few examples of the strengths and weaknesses that I came up with. Um, so for this proposal, the Goal Green Policy, um, my strengths were that it would encourage employees to be more environmentally friendly. The project would involve proactivity and involvement from all employees, so it would help to boost uh, morale and teamwork. Um, I also said that a reduction in the use of paper and ink cartridges would reduce office waste and therefore lower costs to the company. Okay, to look at the weaknesses, so on the other hand, arranging things like recyclable collections and changing energy fittings could incur some costs to the company. And you've also got to think about accreditation costs. So to be an actual green office, you do have to be um, accredited by an actual company and the audits can be very time consuming and also costly to the business. So I'll just give you a couple of seconds just to read over the opportunities and threats. Got some examples, it allows the, the company to be you know, paid for to office and it allows the employee to be more actively involved in wider company issues. Okay, moving on to the next proposal. Um, this was the reinforcement of regular staff meetings. Um, so currently my organisation is expanding quite rapidly um, and we are looking to move offices um, because at the moment everyone's split up into different offices so communicating can, pro can prove quite difficult. Um, so I signed on this proposal and came up with the following strengths and weaknesses. So I've got that enforcing regular staff meetings could improve communication within the workplace. It engages employees with wider company issues and it also provides employees with a chance to voice their opinion professionally and openly. Okay, so look at the weaknesses. So on the other hand, many people could argue that the process is too time consuming and trying to find a suitable time for most employees to get together um, can take time out of busy schedules and therefore can hinder workflow. Um, we've also got that some people often feel as though management drive the meetings and in an open environment people don't always feel like they can disagree with what's being said or don't have much involvement in the agenda or topics that are discussed. So again I'll just give you a couple of seconds just to read over the opportunities and threats that are detailed there. satisfaction surveys. Um, again, I followed the same process looking at the strengths and weaknesses for each. 
So I've got some of the strengths could be that it demonstrates to employees that you're interested in their welfare and ideas. Improving employee satisfaction will increase working output, productivity and efficiency. Um, ensuring your employees are satisfied can help to reduce resignation rates, rates of absenteeism and also staff turnover. And it also helps management identify areas where employees feel there's a need for improvement or change. And so on the other hand, the weaknesses, again, the process could be too time consuming for many. And often employees may not always complete the questionnaires as honestly as you would expect. So you need to question how accurate the results could actually be. Again, so we do a couple of seconds to go over the opportunity and threats for this proposal. to implement was the introduction of employee satisfaction surveys. So I decided on this proposal mainly because there's not an employee satisfaction scheme in my company at the moment. Uh, so employees are actually only asked for feedback just before their appraisal, which only happens once a year. Uh, so many people argue we don't get the, enough opportunity to give feedback on company issues or employee issues. Um, so if we just take a look at the board, and I've detailed some reasons as to why I chose the project. So again, I've got that it would help to reduce employee retention, staff turnover and absenteeism. It again demonstrates that you're interested in employee welfare and that their opinions and ideas are valued. And I've got that high employee morale encourages employee engagement and boosts efficiency. And it would also help to improve communication between employees across different departments. When planning to make a change within my company, I thought it was essential to think about the benefits to my organisation and also the employees. Um, as a project can only be successful with the full support and authorisation from management and also the dedication and commitment from the employees themselves. Um, so when proposing the idea to the management team, I'm going to state the following benefits to my organisation. So we've got just some examples here. Um, Employee engagement increases working output, um, it encourages communication amongst employees, it provides the company the chance for improvement and development, um, highlights the management sometimes where additional training would be very beneficial, and it encourages employee interaction and participation across the organisation. Okay, so when planning to implement the project, um, I felt it important to document and state the aims of my project as I felt that structure and logic is vital to a successful organisational change. So when planning to implement my project, I plan to follow the following aims. So we've got my aim will be to produce a simple employee satisfaction survey to obtain results on employee satisfaction levels. I want the survey to be time efficient, self-explanatory and easy to use. So there will be a minimum of 15 multiple choice questions and the survey should initially take a maximum of 10 minutes, but it won't be taking all the time out of the employees' daily schedules. So the aim of the project is to get all employees actively involved and to encourage and develop communication between employees and management. Okay. <clears throat> so to help me make my proposal as strong and as accurate as possible, I thought it was essential to think about what evidence I had to support the need for change. But in order for me to obtain relevant evidence, I carried out both forms of primary and secondary research. So to, for, to form my primary research, I carried out an employee questionnaire. So the questionnaire was used to identify whether or not the employees felt they would benefit from an unsatisfaction survey being implemented in the workplace, and whether there was actually a niche for this project in my organisation. The questionnaire was only very brief and included five questions. It was distributed to a total of 10 employees aged between 18 and 55, as I felt this would make the results more diverse, accurate and fair. So the employees had one week to complete the questionnaire before it was passed back to myself. I documented the results in an Excel spreadsheet so that they would be easy to read 
the management and the result that the physician can see. So the questions that were asked just along the bottom here and the results are displayed in the bar chart. Give me a couple of seconds just to review those. So essentially I used the data um, to identify that there was a need for employee dissatisfaction surveys in my organisation. So the results are also continued on the next slide. Um, so again, these are the questions that were asked and the results are displayed here. So if we take this one for example, 60% strongly agreed that they would benefit from a regular satisfaction survey and 30% also agreed. So does the company currently have this process in place? 70% strongly disagreed and 30% disagreed. And here we've got, does the company actually ask regular feedback? So as you can see from the chart here, most of the employees actually disagreed at the minute. They're not being asked regular feedback on business matters. Okay. So in addition to the primary research, we also considered various aspects of secondary research. So I considered the change management theory, such as Kurt Lewin's theory of change, which is just at the bottom here. Um, the model made me think about the method behind my project and helped me to identify the best way to implement a change to the business. The model seemed simple yet logical and allowed me to consider each step to a successful implementation of a project. So in the initial planning stage, I also created mind maps, and the mind, map mind mapping method helped me to note down my ideas in a quick and easy format. The process highlighted the factors I needed to consider, and consequently the cause and effect for each factor. So essentially the mind map and Kurt Lewin's theory of change were used as an initial planning tool for my project. Okay, so as part of my secondary research, I also looked at various websites such as ACAS and the CIPD. So the headlines are these two examples here, which are detailed on the slideshow. So the articles help me to get an insight into the problem on a larger scale, showing that employee satisfaction is actually a global problem and not just an issue within my organisation. So I'll just give us a couple of seconds just to read through those. <coughs> what problems currently are in the business and how we could address them with limited disruption to, um, to the company. The next stage is the mind mapping and SWOT analysis activity which you've seen earlier on in, in the presentation. So my research stage was the creation of the employee questionnaire which I've shown you the results of. That was just to gain an insight as to whether the project was actually needed in my organisation. Then we've got the distribution of the questionnaire collecting the results. Um, then I obtained my secondary research, which is the articles that I've just displayed. And following this, I had an informal meeting with my line manager to discuss the, the results from my research. And I then created a draft employee of how I wanted the satisfaction survey to look. So this was just to give management an idea of how the um, survey could be presented to the employees. I created a proposal pack which would be distributed to management and my employees and the presentation was also presented to both management and the rest of the company just so everyone could get an idea how the project would be going ahead and also we could gain feedback or assess any problems that, or queries that the employees have. So now the next stages will be to implement the first survey, this will be on a trial basis we will then collate the results and they will then be distributed to management. So I plan to implement the project um, on a trial basis initially. So there'll be the first survey will be on the first or sorry, the 25th of March, and it will then distribute the results are distributed to management on the 8th of April. They'll then have between a four to six month period 
to assess the results and make any necessary changes.